Hi there, welcome to the Happy Chicken Coop YouTube channel. Thanks for joining us today. We're going to be talking about the four diseases humans can get from backyard chickens. Before we get into that, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's how we continue to grow our following. Also, be sure to subscribe to our website, thehappychickencoop.com. If you subscribe using the link in the description, you will receive a free ebook on the 10 best egg laying chicken breeds and an in-depth breakdown of each one. All right, without further ado, let's get into it. So we've come to depend on the food industry to supply us with tasty, quick meals in our busy lives. The downside of this is the occasional outbreak of food-related illnesses. Unfortunately, we can get a disease from backyard chickens. Sadly, we become almost used to hearing about salmonella outbreaks, listeria, E. coli, and etc. They have until bit recently been linked with large industrial type factories or processing plants. Last year in the US, there were several smaller outbreaks of salmonella among some backyard chicken keepers. We don't really know whether the salmonella was from contaminated meat or eggs, but I thought this would be a good time to remind everyone that you can get sick from your chickens if you're not careful. The word zoonotic, as in zoonotic diseases means that the bug or disease can be passed from one species to another. The ones we will touch on here are the common diseases associated with chickens, salmonella, listeria, campylobacter, and E. coli. Each of these four is generally associated with tainted meat, eggs, or other dairy products such as raw milk. We will also look at some of the ways contamination can happen and what you can do to prevent it in your backyard chickens. So let's start with the first one, salmonella disease, and let's talk about the cause and the treatment. Salmonella is perhaps the number one cause of illness and death in the young, elderly, and immune suppressed populations. The CDC estimates that over 1.2 million people were sick from salmonella in 2020 and 450 died. We generally learn of the problem when we recall chicken or other meat products and eggs. The most likely cause of a large illness outbreak is from contaminated meat from the processing plant by improperly cleaned equipment, personnel not following strict hygiene rules, etc., or the hatchery that supplied the birds. Many folks have taken up keeping chickens because of the inhumane treatment of animals or all too frequent outbreaks of contaminated food. While your chances of getting salmonella are low, it makes sense to maintain your own supply of eggs and meat. However, it would help if you realize that chickens could carry salmonella, so you must carefully handle your own flock. Chickens can be carriers of salmonella and show no signs of illness because the bird is well nourished and able to keep the bacteria from multiplying. So how does salmonella spread? A salmonella can be passed from chicken to chicken or hen to egg. A salmonella sits in the chicken's intestine, feeding on all the nutrients it gets from the digestion of food. Once it's passed as a bird dropping, it can remain active for a long time. It can be easily picked up by another bird that may be pecking at the droppings and can be easily spread throughout the flock in this manner. A hen who is a salmonella carrier can pass it on to her unborn chicks and it can cause around 5% mortality in new ones. Signs of sick chickens are pretty universal. They will look depressed, ruffled feathers, they will have diarrhea, their eyes will be closed, they'll be hunched up and have a decrease in appetite. As you can see, these signs fit numerous chicken ailments. So if you suspect salmonella, take a fecal sample to your local vet and they'll be able to test for worms and salmonella. It is treatable with antibiotics. There's actually a vaccine that can be given to chickens, but unfortunately it's not available to small flock keepers at this time. Now let's talk about listeria. Thankfully, listeria outbreaks are much less common than salmonella since about 20% of humans that gets the severe form go on to die from it. The reason is, is that the number of reported cases is on the rise. Listeria is less a disease of poultry, more of cattle, goats, and sheep. Still, they can become infected by pecking at the soil, decaying, vegetation or water that has been contaminated. Listeria can be found in animals and birds' guts where it can reside causing no problems. Much like the signs and symptoms of salmonella, the hen will be lethargic and look unwell. The severe form of listeria attacks the brain causing wry neck, leg paddling, and partial or full paralysis and unsteady walking, not to be confused with Marek's disease. And then hens with the severe form usually die. It can be treated with antibiotics if found early enough in the disease process. Outbreaks of listeria and poultry are very infrequent. You should be aware that most cases of listeria come from meat or dairy products, but the terrible thing is that it can survive and thrive during refrigeration. Now let's talk about Campylobacter disease in backyard chickens. Campylobacter 
or jejuni can inhabit a broad range of livestock, including chickens. It is usually non-pathogenic and it does not cause illness in chickens, so they're rarely treated with antibiotics. It can be problematic with house birds, such as parrots and finches. Chickens can pick up the bug from insects, rodents, cross-contamination from other species like cows or sheep, or a contaminated environment. Infections tend to be more prolific in the summer months. An article in The Guardian actually stated that Campybolacter in poultry accounted for a whopping 80% of all Campybolacter illnesses in humans. In the US, Campybolacter is responsible for greater than 50% of all cases of enteritis investigated. Contamination can occur during processing in large-scale industrial chicken houses, inadequate food, raw milk, and contaminated hand-to-mouth contact, usually from children. Illness in chickens is unusual, but can occur. The usual symptoms will be diarrhea, lethargy, weakness, the chicken looking isolated or looking unwell. In humans, profound diarrhea, abdominal cramps, nausea, vomiting, and fever are all part of the disease. Victims often need rehydration and hospitalization, especially the young and elderly. Let's talk about the last one, E. coli. E. coli is probably the best known of all food poisoning germs. We all have E. coli living in our intestines where it is safe, contained, and helping break down food for us. It is when E. coli turns up elsewhere that it can become a problem. Most animals and birds have E. coli living in their gut. E. coli is known as an opportunistic infection, meaning that it can attack when the infected bird, mammal, or person has been compromised somehow. In chickens, probably the most commonly seen manifestation of E. coli is egg yolk peritonitis. When the egg is launched into the reproductive system, occasionally they will deposit it in the bird's abdomen instead of the infundibulum. It just so happens that the egg yolk is a perfect medium for infection. Chicks that have been hatched from contaminated eggs can develop omphalitis, also known as mushy chick. Bacteria has then entered the egg and set up the infection. So when the chick is hatched, it has already an overwhelming infection and usually succumbs to it. Chickens can be infected with a low pathogenic E. coli, which may go undetected for a long time. The usual signs are decreased egg performance, lethargy, diarrhea, and generally just looking ill. E. coli is shed in the poop, so infection of other birds can easily occur. The most usual way humans become infected is by improperly prepared or cooked food. Hand washing is essential after handling your birds to prevent any ingestion by accident. So now let's talk about how to prevent zoonotic disease with your chickens. Now that you know how you can catch the disease from your birds, how do you prevent them? There's really just a few straightforward things that you can do and we've divided the preventative information into two parts. Number one, poultry. Number two, humans. Let's talk about poultry preventative measures. The flock needs to be kept relatively clean. Yes, I know chickens are messy and you should hose areas where the chickens roam to keep poop from accumulating. Frequent removal of damp litter and poop is essential in the warmer months to prevent bacterial growth. Twice yearly washing down of inside the coops, perches, nesting boxes, etc., and hosing down of high traffic areas. A solution of equal parts vinegar and water does an effective job. Clean eggs as necessary after collection and keep them in the fridge. If eggs are dirty, they should always be cleaned with hotter water than the egg or use special wipes made for egg cleaning. You should toss out filthy eggs. Compost your manure properly if you use it in the garden. Flies are attracted to dung heaps. So turn it regularly to help the breakdown of materials. If you have used the manure on garden veggies, don't eat them until they are washed because bacilli can live for a very long time. Good nutrition for your flock is essential. Use vitamins and electrolyte powder and drinkers as needed. Let them outside as frequently as you can to get their vitamins from the sun and grass. Also effective rodent control. Just because you can't see them doesn't mean you don't have them. Rodents can carry several diseases, so be on the lookout for the telltale signs of infestation also don't forget your health checks for your hens parasites such as lice and mites may weaken their immune systems and leave them open for infection also try to buy your birds from reputable people preferably npip breeders npip stands for the national poultry improvement plan it was established in the 1930s to provide a cooperative industry state and federal program through which new diagnostic technology can be effectively applied to the improvement of poultry and poultry products throughout the country. All right, now let's talk about the preventative measures for humans. These are pretty straightforward. 
Good hand washing is the first one, as always. If you can't wash your hands directly after handling your hands, use an antibacterial hand rub. I keep one in the barn and use it frequently. Also, don't eat or drink in or around the coop. I'm surprised that I'd have to say something like that. Try to keep a set of chicken clothes separate from your wardrobe. Use them for cleaning the coop and your livestock chores. You should also carefully watch children under five. Toddlers have a habit of putting things in their mouths. Now, if you butcher your birds, make sure you do it cleanly. The carcass should not be contaminated by intestinal residue. Make sure you cook meats thoroughly and refrigerate leftovers promptly. Do not eat meat that has been sitting around at the room temperature for longer than a couple hours. Now, before consuming eggs, wash them thoroughly and check closely for hairline cracks to ensure bacteria has not entered the egg. So to summarize, what can we take away from this? If you follow all the steps outlined that I just went through, for hygiene cleanliness, it's doubtful you'll get sick from your own flock and you'll continue to enjoy the benefits of your hens. Unfortunately, due to the overuse or inappropriate use of antibiotics in animals, birds, and humans, we see variations in bugs like E. coli that are resistant to most antibiotics. The major culprit remains industrialized farming, processing, and sales. Many steps in the process can lead to illness, especially if shortcuts are taken. If you suspect that your flock suffers from any of these infections, the vet can take a swab and send it for analysis. Positive results you can treat with antibiotics. If you see signs that your flock is sick, it's best to stop consuming the products they are producing, at least temporarily. It's best to have your birds checked by a veterinarian to pinpoint the exact illness so you can treat it amongst the entire flock. More importantly, if you feel sick or experience any symptoms that indicate you have any of the illnesses that I just went through, see your doctor immediately. We hope this has enlightened you and reassured you that your flock would not make you sick as long as you follow sensible precautionary steps. We want you to enjoy your flock and keep both them and yourself happy and healthy. That's going to do it for us here at the Happy Chicken Coop. Thanks for listening. If you find our content interesting, if you learn something new, please be sure to like the video and subscribe to the YouTube channel and make sure to share it with your friends. And I hope you have a great day and we'll talk to you soon.